Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm TZ Sweezy, and in this video, I'm going to be covering the subdivision surface modifier. Now the subsurface modifier is used to create complex smooth surfaces while using simple low vertice meshes. This modifier allows you to model high resolution meshes without the need to save and maintain huge amounts of data uh, in RAM and it gives you that smooth organic look to an object. Now it's not a very complex modifier, so I'll just go and add it real quick. And you can see there's not a lot going on here, but there are some settings, and so we'll talk about these settings through the rest of our video. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so right off the bat, we have two different algorithms for how subdivisions will be added on to our object. We have the Catmull Clark, which is by default the one that is set, and we have a simple. Now if I change over to simple, what you can see is now I have, once again, the cube shape, and if I go into wireframe mode and then increase the number of subdivisions on the view, it's adding in these extra subdivisions. However, with the Catmull Clark, it tries to add in the subdivisions and then smooth out the distance between them so that you're getting more of a rounded or smooth shape. Okay, so those are the two different algorithms between Catmull Clark and the symbol subdivision. We've also looked at the number of subdivisions here. We have a view subdivision, which is just the number of subdivides essentially that the object is going to make. And then we have a render. Now the render, is the number of subdivisions that will be shown when it's rendered. So if I drop this down to say one and then increase this to six, we can go over here and hit render. And when it renders, you can see that our cube is now pretty spherical because it's been subdivided using the Catmull Clark algorithm. But back in our object mode, all we see is this. So when you're working with your modifier, you wanna keep your subdivisions in the view lower than your render settings, but high enough so that you can kind of see what it's going to look like, but if not so high that you're working with a super dense mesh in your uh, 3D viewport. All right, so that is pretty much the subdivision surface modifier, but there are still two things that I need to talk about. The first is how you can use edge loops to kind of change the shape of the, or the application of the subdivision surface modifier. And the other is how you can manipulate the modifier stack to get a different effect with the subdivision surface modifier. So let's take a look at the first of those two now, which is using edge loops to change the way the subdivision surface modifier gets applied to our objects. All right, so the subdivision surface modifier is a dynamic application of subdivisions, which means that none of those subdivisions are actually in existence until we hit the apply, which can't be done in edit mode. So we go back to object mode, hit apply, and now instead of the cube shape that we had before, these are our actual vertices. So what we wanna do though is not do that. So we'll add in the subdivision surface modifier again, brings us back down here. We'll kind of smooth that out. And want, you wanna make sure that your render subdivisions is higher or equal to the view subdivisions. Otherwise, you know, we could get six or five views, go into the render mode, render that, and now we have a not as smooth object. That's not what we want. So just kind of make sure that your render settings is either equal or greater than your view settings. But back to the point of this section, we're going to talk about the edge loops. So right now, this is kind of unrecognizable as a cube. It's more of a sphere, but we can make it more cube-like by adding in some edge loops and doing edge reinforcement. So we can bring it all the way down here. Once again, bring this up here. Now we've got more of a cylinder. And then we could bring an edge loop over here or over here. So this is a really useful tool, uh, tip, uh, edge reinforcement. It's used in hard surface modeling uh, to really get you that smooth but beveled feel. Now, these edges aren't all the same length, so what we could do is we could undo that, and then just, since it's a cube, just grab everything and bevel it, move it down, and then there we go. And so we've got these extra edge loops here that are beveled, but they are providing structure and support for the Catmull Clark. Now, if we're just doing the simple, right, the simple subdivisions, it doesn't matter um, because it's just gonna add those in. But if you're doing the Catmull Clark, then now it's smooth around the corners where we wanted it, but it's not smoothed out in the center here. So you wanna make sure that your geometry is built in such a way that it's going to be able to support that. 
and good edges. So what we can also do, we'll scale this in, extrude this up, right? And now you can start making stuff without having to worry too much what it's gonna look like um, or without applying it. So our actual model, if we turn this off, is just this weird looking cube with a little button on top, but we turn the subdivision surface back on and it looks like a peg or maybe a Lego brick or something. So it's a real quick way to make things look cooler and smoother by just using edge loops. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about with the subdivision surface modifier is how it works in conjunction with things on the modifier stack. So let me just go ahead and add in a mirror modifier real quick. Now, right now it's the subdivision and then the mirror modifier. So if I move things across the uh, X axis here, what we should see is a full mirroring, but it's subdivided and then it's mirrored, okay? Now this can be problematic if we clip things um, so we clip them there. But if we move the mirror modifier up now, what you can see, and that's, that's kind of a hard thing to notice. Um, so we'll just zoom in real close here. All right, notice that it's subdividing these edges first, and then it's mirroring them across. Whereas when we move the mirror modifier up, now it is mirroring these vertices across the x-axis, and then it is subdividing them. All right, so that's something that you're going to want to keep in mind because you you don't want all of those extra vertices created in there uh, when it should be smooth or connected as it is. Okay, so we can move that together and now we've got a two by two Lego brick or a two by one Lego brick and we haven't done a whole lot of extra work. And then if you haven't watched the mirror modifier video yet, um, you know, you might have noticed or that there's this, all this extra geometry on the inside and we don't want all that extra geometry on the inside so we're just going to go ahead and delete these faces here not that one let me go back into edit mode or we'll dissolve all these faces into one face Okay, now once we've dissolved it, notice how that, that kind of works itself out. I could then delete that. No, not the edges. I just want the face. Delete the face. Reinforce the edge. Reshow the mirror modifier. And now that little crease that was there before is now gone because there's no faces on the inside pulling that edge down. All right, so that's how you can use the subdivision surface modifier with the modifier stack and get some pretty neat results. This has been the subdivision surface modifier video. I'm TZ Sweezy, and I'll see you in the next video.